highest human beings, the data would show that we're not that efficient. I'm painfully honest enough with myself to know I spend far too much time checking the updates of the email because it's comfortable. If I tweaked things, I'd probably achieve more in the week. Hi everyone, my name is Molly Dobson and I'm the General Manager for Amazon Business UK and Ireland. I am very pleased to be joined today by David Rowan, founding editor-in-chief of UK Wired magazine, investor, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, author and more. David is joining me today to talk about the critical yet oftentimes extremely difficult to achieve skill of time management. So welcome David, thank you for joining us. Thanks Molly. So a little bit of context on why um, I was excited to have you join me in this conversation today. Uh, so my Amazon business team is out talking to organizations every day about how they can work smarter, better, faster, using digital solutions. These businesses range from sole proprietors, Fortune 500 companies, so their, their problems are vast, but they all want to know how to spend their time well or spend their time right. So as an investor, as a founder yourself, you've traveled the world speaking with some of the most innovative and successful entrepreneurs of our time. Uh, so I'd really be interested in getting your perspective on how our customers can think about spending their time better and spending their time right. I'm also having to work out every day whether this founder who is pitching me to invest in their company at such an early stage there's no data about whether they're likely to make it whether this founder can manage their time with enough focus to likely get somewhere rather than hit the wall so because you this is your focus you are an investor as well so you're constantly out there trying to understand where the opportunity is what are some of the commonalities you see across these successful founders on the ones that really know how to manage their time well and, and their productivity? So I went from telling the stories about the people building the crazy future that doesn't exist running wired mm -hmm. to getting a bit too close to some of these founders, getting a bit too excited about what they're doing. And I've now made about 90 small investments in their companies where you have to have a very high tolerance of pain because nine out of ten startups tend not to make it. So that puts pressure on me in that 30 minute Zoom call or if you're lucky you actually get to meet them in person and you have to assess based on every data input I'm getting from how they answer questions to what they've built so far mm -hmm. to how much of a team they've been able to put together. You have to make a, an informed guess as to whether they're likely to be among the 10% that make it. And one of the things I've noticed, and after a while you get pattern recognition, is they're living in reality more than fantasy land. They are aware of all the obstacles that are likely to try and prevent them, and they've thought through a way around. I always ask founders, so it's five years from now, you failed, talk me through why? And if they're in denial, ah, oh, but we've got the best team, we won't fail. Ah, oh, we're first at market, we won't. then that's probably not going to work. It's the people who know how to read the data to minimize things failing. It's how to motivate their team, but also organize time so they focus that are more likely to win. And when I say manage time, they see time as a data point. It's obsessive collecting of data. How many people are coming to our homepage for how many seconds? How many of them are converting via our app? Which products that we thought were going to be successful are getting less interest than last month? Because reality is pretty brutal, and you have to stay in reality, even if your comfort is staying with what you were doing last month. When I was at Wired, one of our first columnists was Dave, David Allen, who wrote a series of books around the theme of getting things done, GD, GTD. It became a movement. Um, but it was really smart in one particular respect. He forced you to list everything that was on your mind and then to focus on which of those goals you could reach in the short term. If you could give one piece of advice, boil it down to one piece of advice that you could give the people watching this video today on what is something that they could do today to start thinking about increasing their focus and managing their time better, what advice would you give? Focus, 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 avoid distraction. We are biased human beings. We tell ourselves stories about 
how we're really smart at doing things. And in fact, the data would show that we're not that efficient. Make a little grid of a day, a typical day, and out of 100%, what do you think you want to achieve in your time that day? And you might think that 8% should just be talking to people, reading, exploring about things that aren't part of the business today, but might be relevant in the future. You might not know about aspects of cryptocurrencies and blockchains, but maybe it's going to be important to learn. Have you factored in spending time doing that? Maybe 7% of your day should be in giving feedback and reinforcement to members of your team. Have you factored that in? Whatever it is, make that chart, work out out of that 100% how you want to spend that day, and then compare that with the reality of yesterday yeah. or last Friday, and work out where you need to tweak. Because I'm painfully honest enough with myself to know I spend far too much time checking the updates of the email because it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. I spend far too much of my time talking to people I really like, but don't really learn much from in terms of investing mm -hmm. and other decisions I need to make. If I tweaked things, I'd probably achieve more in the week and my productivity would yeah. be yeah. more optimal. But that starts with being honest with yourself and, and carving out that bit of time to really understand how you're spending your time and is it the way you want to spend Start your time. Start with reality. Time. Start with reality and then keep it in reality, hopefully. I really appreciate all of the, the insights you shared today. And speak of time management, I think we're probably out of time with this, but I found this to be very valuable and I hope everyone watching today also can take away a few key messages from David on how you can manage your time right and be more productive in your work. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you.